Okay, this is a walkthrough for the summer 2012 IGCSE ICT paper. Um, it's the uh, question paper 2 and we're looking at question 46. So at the start of um, these database questions um, you will have already imported your data into your database and you should have a table with no import errors. If you have got import errors then that means that you may not have set the correct data types when you imported your data in here. With our table the examiner will ask you to create a new report here. Now when they ask you to create a new report the first thing that should come to your mind is that you need to actually make a query based on your data. So we're going to make a query. We're going to look at the data that they're asking for. So we scan through the whole question and we look at the bits in bold because those are parts which will need the most action in your query. Um, here we've been asked to create two new fields and this is the main part that we're going to focus on, the first part that we're going to focus on. So showing only records where sold is yes, sales in 2012, salesperson is Villa Lobos. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this query. So we go to create and then query design. We're going to add our table. Be careful not to add it more than once. If you add it more than once, then you're going to get hundreds of records showing up in your final report. So just add it once, then press close. And then add in all the fields, regardless of which fields I ask you to show. At this point in the query, you should add in all your fields. Based on the question, they've asked for sold is yes, sales 2012, Salesperson Villa Lobos. So, sold is yes. The date sold is 2012. Now, if I enter just 2012 in here, this isn't going to work because remember the dates can be anything from the 1st of January 2012 all the way to, say, the 31st of December 2012. Now a clever way of doing all the dates in 2012 would be to add a wild card. So we're just putting a star before 2012 and that should pick out any numbers that come before 2012. So look at this and you'll see all of these have 2012 and all of these are the ones which are sold and um, it says yes on these. The next part then is the salesperson Villa Lobos. This would be in here. Let's view this. So this is our data. Sold is yes. Villa Lobos is a salesperson and all the dates are 2012. Some of you might find that this is showing as minus one. This might be just the way that your data is set up um, or the way that your field type has been formatted. So we can change this in this view here we can format this as yes no if you think it makes it easier to look at so that's just by right clicking format and just change this to yes no but it's not really necessary at this stage the next part then is to do our calculated fields so the first calculated field is called discount we'll ignore this for now and we'll just do the calculation which is the price multiplied by discount applied divided by 100. This is because it's a percentage so they've asked for it to be divided by 100. So in order to do a calculated field we would click on a new field, right click and then build. And here we find our table and the fields that we're using are price multiplied by discount apply divided by 100 and then we press OK. To check that this has worked we can see that this was our original price and this is our discount. It's called EXPR1 so we can rename that now to discount. 
The next part is then to do a new field called sale price. And this is price minus a discount. This is a lot easier because we can build once again. So right click and build. We take our price and then we just press minus and then discount. And this discount that we've put here is referring to this field that we've renamed here. So this was EXPR1, it's now discount. If I press OK, we should see that this last field is our price minus the discount. Once again, we'll rename this to sale price. And this is our finished query. Now we can go ahead and make the report. So let's create the report. You'll ask us to save it. Let's say yes. At this point, it might be a good idea to save the query with exactly the name that is suggested for the report title. So 2012 sales record. For Villalobos. So let me take that. 20 sales sales report for Villalobos. And that way, when we make our report, our title is already done for us. We can keep this property sheet up to start with. Um, you can see that this dotted line is where the page cuts off. So you are going to have to resize your fields. Check that you only include the fields that are asked for. So salesperson, model, price, discount. So salesperson, model, price. Discount. So we don't need discount applied. Date sold. Sell price and sold. So let's just delete the ones that we don't need. We don't need this, this, this. Just to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got our seven fields. Okay, so all of these parts are done. Now let's sort it into sending order of model. Bear in mind at the moment I'm in layout view. So I can go into group and sort up here, add a sort by model. Okay, so now they're all sorted alphabetically by model A to Z. The other thing it asks you to do is make sure it's portrait and then also calculate the total value of sales below the sale price. So it's already portrait, but if it isn't we can change that on page setup. And then in terms of the sale price, this has already been calculated for us here. The only thing that I need to do is I need to change this to pound sterling, or it might actually be in euros in the question. Let me just change to currency, and it will match this. If it specifies euros, then you can do that there. If the total isn't there, let's assume that your data imports through and you have no totals anywhere. In order to do our totals, we would click on the field we want to total, and then we can click on Format, Totals, and this is a sum. We're adding everything up. And here would be our total. Once again, I click on Format, and then Currency. 
if this property sheet isn't here, I would just right click and go to properties. Yeah. After this, um, we need to check the totals formatted to two decimal places. It is. It includes a label to the left and our report title. This is already done, so let's just do the label to the left called total value of sales. So for this, we'll go to design view. I'll insert a label. We never use the text box. In your exam, you'll never be able to use text box. So make sure you're always using label. Um, otherwise, you will get pop-ups asking you to enter a field name. So this is total value of sales. After that, it also says we need to, we've done our title already, so we do our name, center number, candidate number, on the right at the top of the report. So always pay attention to this right at the top, because this is worth a mark. If you put it in the wrong position, then they won't get for you the mark either. So going back to here, I can take out the date and time, it's not really necessary. Once again, I'm using a label, the right at the top of the report, I'm going to put in my name, my centre number, and my candidate number. You can put this in if you want to. If you want to make new lines, we can press Shift and Enter. Okay, and if we go back to layout view, we should see how it is. Our candidate number is here. We have total values of sales. Um, I've got all the other fields shown. I might just change this to currency as well, just so it's very clear. You can rearrange your data as they've requested. So according to this order here, if you want to, but as far as I'm aware, you won't lose any marks, even if you did, um, don't do that. And then you're ready to print. So you can go to here and then print. So that is how you would do question 46. Um, question 45 is a lot more straightforward than that, so I think you should be fine with this. Um, and hope that's been useful. Um, and it should provide a guide for how to do fields that are calculated at runtime and also how to do a report in general. Bear in mind that we always do our query first. Okay.